1948, the land of the Palestinians was stolen. That's exactly what happened. In 1948, the claim was laid and people decided if you are interested to look at the true history, you will find it. They used the term Israel to refer to a place when in history it only ever referred to a people. Israel is Jacob. May peace be upon him. The children of Israel or the Israelites are the children of Jacob. It never referred to a place. The place, the Canaanites who were there, Palestine, Palestine, people know this. So what they did is they came in, they killed, they took the land. And in fact, initially before 1948, as some of them came, they were welcomed by the poor Palestinians who saw these are our cousins. They are being persecuted wherever they were. And let us give them a little bit of perhaps room to live. And we will try and live with each other. What happened? You need to know that as they came in a little while later, they made their true intentions clear that we are here because we believe that this is our promised land. You tell me we are Muslims sitting in this masjid. Do you not believe in Moses? Do you not believe in Jesus? Do you not believe in Muhammad? May peace be upon them all. Is the fact that you are a follower of a faith an automatic permission for you to claim land wherever that person whom you follow was? Can you today go to Bethlehem or the Christians go to Bethlehem or Nazareth and say that Jesus was here, so this is ours? They can't, they wouldn't. Because you know, you can't claim that because the, I am following this religion, so this land is mine where my priest was, my guru was, my prophet was, and so on. You can't say that. It's common sense. People came in from Europe, they took the land. That's the reason why today it is prohibited, and you can Google this, to do a DNA test in Israel. Totally forbidden. Wrong. It's illegal. It's a crime. You'll be jailed if you do a DNA test in Israel. Why? Because they know the truth will come out. You come from Poland, you come from Ukraine, you came from Europe, you came from everywhere else. And they were the original Middle Eastern Jews who lived together with the Muslims and the Christians for centuries, for centuries. So what happened to a lot of the Jews who were the Middle Eastern Jews? How come the Palestinians were all or predominantly Muslim? Did you know that there are hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Christians? Did you know that? Across the globe, they are scattered. They suffered as well. In fact, they suffered perhaps more than the Muslims. Do you know that their churches were bombed? Do you know that they feel more unsafe than the Muslims? Did you ever know that? These are Palestinians. So it's not something to say that this land was only taken from the Muslims. No, it was taken from the Palestinians. And what was the excuse used? They told their people that, you know what? You all belong to a certain faith. So by you belonging to that faith, you are now entitled to the land of your forefathers. And who were your forefathers? These were they. I ask you a question again for a second time in this talk. As Muslims, do you think it would be sensible for me to come up and say, you follow Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was in Medina. Therefore, you have a right to go and claim the land there. Do you? You can go, you can visit, you can come back. You can say, wow, he was there. I saw and so on. You can't claim the land just because you're a follower. Where are you from? So those who were there, the Middle Eastern Jews, most of them, according to the books of history, converted. They converted to what? To Christianity and then to Islam. Who was Jesus sent to? Was he not sent to the Jews? Was he not Jewish? That's what we believe. He was part of Banu Israel, the children of Jacob. Ishaq is the son of whom? Ibrahim. And after Ishaq, you had Yaqub. When Allah says in the Quran, so we had Yaqub. And Yaqub was known as Israel or Israel. That was the man's name. So today that land, they call it Jacob, basically, which is Israel. Jacob. Why don't we use the word Jacob? So the people of Jacob, that's what it is. It's not the land. Look at this chart right here. This shows you what's happened to the land in Israel, Palestine over the years. So if you look at 1917, this entire land before the British mandate in Palestine, Jews made up around 6% of the total population. Then you go to 1948, war ends, 
Israel gets their land, 750,000 Palestinians are expelled, Zionist military forces these guys to go to different places, capture 78% of historic Palestine. Then you go to 1967, Israel occupies Gaza and the West Bank. Then you go to 95, the Oslo Accords, which the occupied West Bank was divided into three different areas. Area A, Palestinian control, Area B, joint Israeli and Palestine, and Area C, Israeli control. And under Trump, this plan would allow Israel to annex huge parts of the occupied West Bank and give Palestinians control of only 15% of historic Palestine. Okay, so now if we take a look at the next one here. Here's So for those of you who have not heard, this is the Greater Israel Project. This is the idea that certain Zionists want to do as far as taking over large portions of the Middle East around Israel. So let's look. There's Israel right there. And look what they want to take. They want to take all this territory in Egypt into the Sinai Desert, all the way up through Lebanon, all the way up through most of Syria, right on down the midsection of Iraq and all of Kuwait, and then the entire northern section of Saudi Arabia. The idea being that they want to go from the Euphrates River all the way to the Sinai. Now, check out this woman who says exactly that, and she believes this stuff, and she's leading a bunch of settlers to complete this project. I'm laughing because the, the right word for it, you have to brainwash all the time. You have to say, to explain it, to live it cope with it. My husband says to me, why do you speak to your children all the time about Zionism, pioneers in Judea and Samaria, settling and settling, and all my family are settlers here, because this is the only way to continue Zionism, be a state. I want to have for the Jewish nation the promised land from the Bible, from the Ephri uh, Prat, Ephrates, yes, yes. to the Nile. And uh, I'm sure it will be. And what about southern Lebanon? If it's a, it is part of it, all of it, even parts of Syria, part of Iraq, part of Iran, it's a, it's huge. You think you have any way of convincing people that that would be a good idea? I convince many, many people believe in it. I don't see anything uh, um, like uh, uh, anything extreme in my approach. It's a basic Jewish approach. I wish I shared your feeling about the future. <laughs> I, am, I am worried. I can yeah. tell you that I am no, worried don't, well, don't, that, don't, that don't this worried. is the place which will result in the end of Israel. So here's the question. Is what we're seeing happening right now part of this bigger plan to take over all of this territory as that woman described? What do you think? That decision to recognize Israel is an easy one. I had to make a compromise with the Arabs and divide Palestine. The Jews wanted to chase all the Arabs into the uh, Tigris and Euphrates River, and the Arabs wanted to chase all the Jews into the Red Sea. And I was trying, what I was trying to do was to find a homeland for the Jews and still be just with the Arabs. But when you go into a thing of that kind, the people you help most are the ones that get most angry with you. Both of them were against me on the situation, but as President of the United States, I paid no attention to them, carried out what I thought was right, and I had the support of the Congress, and I could do it, which is unusual in these days. Can you tell us specifically that a lot of Jewish people were against you, too? Oh, well, there were a lot of Jewish people against me because they wanted the whole of Palestine. As I say, they wanted to drive all the Arabs into the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Thank you for joining me for another video. In today's video, I by no means imply that the wars taking place here on the continent of Africa against my brothers and sisters is less important or tragic. I acknowledge their pain and their suffering. But I want to talk about the Palestine and Israel war. For two reasons. Number one, that it could, or that it does affect us directly here, because it's our government that's gone against the grain and confronted the world powers that they have governed this world for the past plus minus 400, 400 500 years, which is no small thing. 
number two the ridiculousness and I guess the evilness of Zionism you know that on the basis of a fake identity you're going to destroy and kill for something that was never yours to begin with <sighs> but it seems all wars are started because someone tries to take something that's not theirs and then you have people like this man this one might hurt a little bit christians if you are not supporting israel right now you might want to reread your bible okay i'm going to be bold with this it says in romans it says in genesis it says in first thessalonians that those who bless the jews and those who support israel and bless israel will be blessed as christians we are called to support israel okay i don't understand how you can think otherwise it, it's it's baffling i see some of these comments you need to be called out you need to look at your bible and see what it says okay those who don't if you turn your back on israel you will be scorned if you bless israel you will be blessed okay we are here to support we here we are here to support the jews we are here to support israel what are we doing <sighs> come on the the devil has an agenda and that's to wipe israel off of this map and you know what's going to happen i do because i read my bible Israel will not be touched. God will step in. He will intervene. And I hope that you are on the side that will be blessed and not scorned. Take this to heart. Instead of arguing in the comments with this video, instead of arguing in the comment section, take a step back, be slow to speak, look in the mirror, and ask yourself, Do you believe what the word says? Every part of it, or just part of it? Seventh of October, when a group of Hamas fighters, let's call them terrorists, attacked civilians in the southern part of Israel, and the worst atrocities thinkable were perpetrated by this group of people: one thousand four hundred Israeli citizens, civilians murdered maimed, raped, children beheaded, put in ovens and set alight. That happened. That happened. The ANC, the ANC, how did the ANC respond? The ANC, the whole cabinet, came out with their scarves and they said, we support and we stand with Palestine. They said they support and stand with Palestine with the flags and everything in your hands. Not one word, not one word of condemnation of Hamas and these atrocities. Not one word. Only after, after Ahmed Abbas denounced Hamas, after that, a weak sentence came. Oh, the, the record is there and the minister knows that. A weak record came from the ANC. The minister today was more than normally a responsible minister with good proposals, creating an impression that the ANC is sincere in this whole process. No, you're not. While the Honorable Dr. Ndlozi was speaking, and making an attack on Israel with all those statements. This side of the house, the ANC, were all nodding in support. All of you, look at that. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. There you go. That is the real ANC. That is the real ANC. Not the, not the position taken by the minister today. What was the relationship in Gaza? What was the relationship between Gaza and Israel before the 7th of October? What was the relationship? Every day, every day, 20,000 people from Gaza went into Israel to voluntary work. There was a good relationship. Every day, hundreds of trucks, every day, hundreds of trucks went into Gaza to take goods and to bring exports from Gaza back. That was the relationship. But then Hamas decided to destroy all of that. Now, the minister you have now, you have now recalled 
our ambassadorial staff in Israel. And you said it's for consultation purposes. It's not for consultation. No, you can take the telephone and consult. You can take a Zoom call and consult. You've drew, drew those people, why? To send a message to Israel and to send a message to your supporters as well. But you know what? Your message reached further. Today, two senators in the US, Senator Chris Coons and Senator Jim Rich, reacted to that state of yours. The fact that you are with Russia, the fact that you are with Hamas, the fact with, that you are with uh, uh, Iran, you went there. Today, they've reacted by saying, the Ahua process, they will have to take a course of corrective action in Congress. That's the reality. That's, you say it's okay. You say it's okay. Now, Honorable Minister, unfortunately, I don't have the time to, to discuss all these things with you. I've got four minutes. But let me conclude. I have reason to believe that you've got good contacts with Hamas and you've got good contacts with Iran. Oh, yes, you do. Now, let me tell order, you. Order, me honorable tell members. You, the conflict can allow stop. Allow the speaker to conclude. The conflict can stop today. Today, three conditions, three of them. The missiles fired from Gaza must stop. The, the missiles must stop. Secondly, all hostages must be released immediately. Thirdly, the perpetrators of these atrocities by Hamas must be banished. I hope the minister listen. I hope you will convey this. I'm telling you, there are three. You don't listen to me. You don't listen to me. You don't have to listen to me. The ANC is on the wrong side of history, and that's why you will be rejected. Thank you very much, Honorable Dr. Melda. Bye to the ANC. Mm. Ish. Isn't it funny that it's always the palm colored people who always seem to be okay with stealing other people's things? Yeah. I really find it strange that as these people are fighting for a land that's not theirs, their current homeland is being attacked or is at war with Russia. <laughs> so whose land is it anyway? All right, guys, I have some more goodies for you. A couple of weeks ago, I shared this with you, and I think we were all in utter shock from what was written here. You guys all know National Geographic, right? Which, you know, they had their first publication in 1888. It is the largest nonprofit um, organization for scientific and educational facts, archaeology, geography, whatever. So I did some digging and I don't want to tell you what I did to get this, but I found a copy from December 1947, National Geographic, right? And let's look at the second topic here. An archaeologist looks in, can you see this? Palestine. Thank you. Palestine. National Geographic, again, not me. Here, if you go to page 739, what does it say? An archaeologist looks in Palestine. And then if you flip over just two pages, two very close pages over here, what do you see? You see the map of what? What do you read here? What does it say? Palestine. You cannot change history for God's sake. You can't just come up, wake up one day in the morning and decide, oh, guess what? It's not Palestine. But not just this. I was able to get a very ancient atlas from 1839, I believe it was. And here again, if you look at this, this was actually an atlas that was taught in schools in the UK. Look at this. What does it say here again? Map of Palestina, Palestine. And where was this taught? Let's see here. I'll show you real quick. I'm sorry. Everything's kind of falling apart. College and school books. Oh my God, it's falling apart. But this was a college and school book from 1839. I don't know if you see it up there in the top corner. And then another one. This was in the UK, by the way, in England. You can see how old it is, right? There's another one here that was actually published in the USA. And again, here, this one's actually falling apart. This one's very, very delicate. Um, look at this map of, I don't see no Israel here. I see Palestine. 
I only see Palestine, 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 and Palestine. Here, if you look at this over here, this is again published where in 1853, Philadelphia. This here, you see how it's falling apart? You see how old this is? And this, and this, and this is going to be my kids' inheritance. Teach your kids, learn, understand that you cannot change history. You can't wake up in the morning and decide, guess what? You don't exist. I am going to exist. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. It is Philistine. It belongs to them. It's their land. Please get your facts straight. To all Israelis and Israeli supporters who are saying that there was no country named Palestine before 1948, here's a map for you. This map was issued by National Geographic in 1947, one year before the Nakba, which is the catastrophe, and it doesn't show Israel. It shows Palestine over the whole land, bordered by Egypt, Transjordan, Syria, and Lebanon. So, where was Israel? So before 1947, Israel did not exist in the Middle East, but that land rightfully belongs to the Palestinians. The international community has repeatedly failed. It failed the people of Rwanda, it had failed the Bosnian people and the Rohingya, prompting this court to take action. It failed again by ignoring the early warnings of the grave risk of genocide to the Palestinian people sounded by international experts since 19th of October of last year. The international community continues to fail the Palestinian people, despite the overt, dehumanizing, genocidal rhetoric by Israeli governmental and military officials matched by the Israeli army's actions on the ground. Despite the horror of the genocide against the Palestinian people being live streamed from Gaza to our mobile phones, computers, and television screens. The first genocide in history where its victims are broadcasting their own destruction in real time in the desperate, so far vain hope that the world might do something. Israel's special genocidal intent is rooted in the belief that in fact the enemy is not just the military wing of Hamas, or indeed Hamas generally, but is embedded in the fabric of Palestinian life in Gaza. Every day there is mounting irreparable loss of life, property, dignity and humanity for the Palestinian people. Our news feeds show graphic images of suffering that has become unbearable to watch. Nothing will stop the suffering except an order from this court. Without an indication of provisional measures, the atrocities will continue, with the Israeli Defense Force indicating that it intends pursuing this course of action for at least a year. Then you have South Africa. Hey, bruh, as, as noble as that act was, you know, going to the ICJ, I think it's something that we're gonna pay for in the long run. I see these messages from people, hey, God bless South Africa and the people and the lawyers and but yo. <laughs> I'm wondering if these countries are gonna be able to stand up for us when they're all so silent now, or maybe, or even bricks be standing up for us should anything go south. And as much as I have a problem with the type of leadership that we have, I do see the, the message and you know, never leaving your friends behind, you know. We were in apartheid Israel, um, Palestine was in apartheid, so I, I, I acknowledge the history between the two countries um, and the support 
you know, we had help. We had the international community at some point um, finally standing up and taking action. So it's also on us to to show the same, you know, kindness, you know. We wanted somebody to stand up for us, so so we should stand up because somebody stood up for us. So I get it. Okay, I get it. I just feel like, yeah, I don't think anyone is technically afraid. I don't get that sense or worried. You know. But nonetheless, I do agree with uh, what former President Tabombeki said. He said that so long as um, Israel keeps taking land from the Palestinians, they will always, always have organizations like Hamas to deal with. I'm paraphrasing. So, yeah, I, I kind of agree, you know. Even though the truth is like right in our faces, it's right in our faces, we've been brainwashed to choose the lie over and over again. Like, I think Christianity has made us spiritually sick primarily because it teaches us to reject everything, all info outside of the Bible, even reject history itself, events, actual events, your lineage teaches you to reject your family, to reject your ancestors, your culture, your steep, your I think about the damage that this book has done and the damage that Christianity has propagated it's just another like it never ceases to amaze me like for real from the the brainwashing to, to hey hey there's levels to this that just Amazing. The mere fact that it's illegal to do a DNA test in Israel. I mean, if they just did one, <laughs> this should solve this whole thing. <laughs> but the brainwashing is deep. It's deep. It's hectic. But it just goes to show the extent at which they're willing to go to hide this, which is sad. Like, will Israel abide by the court ruling? Because it don't look like it. At what point will they stop when they've acquired all of that land of Syria, of Saudi Arabia? I'd like to see them try. A group of South African Jews for a free Palestine are protesting in Rosebank, Johannesburg. They are calling for a ceasefire to the Israel-Hamas conflict. They've been joined by veteran Palestinian activist Leila Khaled. Kai Kumalo is there and joins us now. Kai, good evening to you and tell us what's happening where you are. Well, that's right, uh, Iman. So this is yet another initiative by the South Africans who are concerned by the current situation in Gaza. So they have quite a number of demands. Uh, but uh, joining us now is uh, one of the organizers here, Joe. So, Joe, thank you so much indeed for your time. First and foremost, I know that you guys, you're calling for the ceasefire in Gaza, but also you're joined by one of the veteran Palestinian activists, uh, uh, Lela Khaled, who has really made it very clear that South Africa should cut off diplomatic ties with the state of Israel. 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us, SABC. Um, absolutely, we had a veteran revolutionary, uh, Leila Khaled, here calling on the South African government to cut all ties with uh, the Israeli government. Uh, we, as, a, as the South African Jews for a Free Palestine, stand very clear in articulating our position against the genocide currently underway uh, in Gaza and in, in the broader context of the settler colonization of Palestine since 1948. Um, so we are, we are delighted to be, uh, to be surrounded by so many people here this evening who are recognizing that Zionism is a fascist project, who are speaking about the multiple, multiple ways that the Israeli government is in violation of international law, including international criminal law, international humanitarian law, the genocide convention, etc., uh, but also recognizing that what is at stake here is much greater than the law. Uh, it has the acquiescence of the international community, the media, and what is going on, we are witnessing um, people being bombarded as they are evacuating, the bombing of a hospital, the shutting down of media, uh, the absolute unspeakable genocide. Uh, and we stand very firmly uh, in refusing to allow anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism to be conflated. I guess we should always keep in mind that the powers that be didn't just lie and hide information from us only. They did it to everyone. So fortunately, there are Jews who do not support Israel. And hopefully these are the Jews that will be able to sway their own government into a ceasefire. Yeah, it's up to them. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Till then. Thank you.